Hey everybody, Jameis Winston took to Twitter, I wish he had done it on my blog, but I digress, to announce that he was leaving the Buccaneers and to thank them for five great seasons. But he left a message that was missed by everyone in mainstream media. And he said that he would see the Bucks February 2020, 2020 vision. That means in the Super Bowl. The only way that Jameis Winston would see the Bucks in the Super Bowl, which happens to be in Tampa, would be to lead an AFC team. Jameis Winston just dropped a giant hint that there is a true possibility he may join an AFC team that is a Super Bowl contender. The Patriots, maybe? Everyone believes the Patriots should make a deal to bring Jameis Winston in. Uh, I think it would be a shame if Bill Belichick did not sign Jameis Winston to some type of deal. The simple fact of the matter is that Tom Brady went around the league, as it was put to me at the NFL Combine, trying to see who loved him. And at the end of the day, no one was ready to give him a $30 million deal except the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are going to pay for that decision. They have a great quarterback in Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston's problem was created by Bucks ownership that wants to have a deep passing attack. The only way they're going to realize any success from Tom Brady is to give up that desire and have, most notably, their head coach, known for the deep passing game, Bruce Arians, completely back away from that and adopt the Patriots style of offense whole cloth, including terminology. If that happens, I would be more than shocked. Many people would. For those people, like, for example, ESPN's Dan Olafsky, who says that Tom Brady can definitely throw in a deep passing game. Dan, you missed the point. It's not about Brady's ability to throw deep. Oh, no. It's about the fact that he was more accustomed to getting the ball off with less time because the passes were designed to be ran quickly. The Patriots studied and then mastered the hurry-up offense. They tailored it to their offense going back as far as 2006 when uh, Josh McDaniel, the offensive coordinator, was dispatched to study Urban Meyer's offense. And he came back with elements that he learned from talking with Urban Meyer and studying that offense. And what they learned was installed in the Patriots' offense, the record-setting offense, the offense that they used when they came one game from running the table in 2007. What stopped them? When they got to the Super Bowl against the New York Giants in Arizona, and I was at that game, and I might add, I have a now famous video of that final New York Giants drive. The Patriots abandoned their short passing game that got them there, went to a middle range to deep passing game. Tom Brady was sacked and harassed almost into oblivion. And they lost. That same fate almost was before the Patriots against the Falcons. They were down 28-3 to and they realized, you know what, we better throw short and come back. In fact, many of the plays they used against the Falcons were plays they used at first in 2007. Tampa Bay Buccaneers do not have those plays. And they don't have the blocking style and technique that goes with them. They're not the Patriots. So anyone expecting Tampa to automatically walk into the playoffs 
I don't want to know what you're taking that makes you think that. Subscribe to Zenny62 on YouTube and bookmark oaklandnewsnow.com and watch out for what promises to, to, promises to be, excuse me, an exciting future for Jameis Winston. Oh, so Winston. And I might add, for those who think Jameis is a bust, he led all but a number of NFL retired Hall of Fame passers in total yards. He's the owner of a nice, what for other quarterbacks would be a bucket list of team records. To say that he was a bust is pure idiocy. Far from it. Jameis Winston did a fantastic job. You know it, and I know it. The only reason he threw as many interceptions as he, as he did is simple. He had two coaches, Dirk Cutter and Bruce Arians, who insisted on pulling offenses that have their roots and design in the 80s and the 90s into today. And I don't mean West Coast style. I don't mean Bill Walsh time passing style. I mean the kind of offense that was ran by coaches that simply didn't like throwing short, that didn't like the ball control. And if you take a look at Bruce Arians' history, he is one of those coaches. Subscribe to Zenny62 on YouTube and bookmark oaklandnewsnow.com.